Hello YouTube, it's me Video Gamer, and today I'm going to be drawing Maka from Soul Eater. Uh, this will be the first time I've ever drawn this character, so hopefully it goes well. I also have a little bit of difficulty with human characters sometimes, but I'm going to do my best on this drawing. First I'm going to start off with a basic sketch outline of the character and her sword. And it's not going to be anything too definite at first, just something to work off of. So the first real details I'm going to work on is the face. I'm going to start with the eyes. Maka's eyes are very serious. They're sort of ovalish, but they've got a line coming down through them. Just like this. And that's just our starting point. But make sure we space them out evenly across the face. We also want to make sure that we got the face shaped correctly. Maka's face I found is very round actually. And the rest of her eye comes around to the side like that. And there's not actually going to be a line there by the time we get done, but that's just to show where the eye stops. Draw on the nose just like this, and it's sort of going to be at the end of the eyes, right there. Just as a shadow of the nose. Her serious mouth. Maka's eyes are kind of weird because they don't really have a glare in them, or for that matter, a pupil. So, we're just going to have to rely on the colors to fix up the eyes by the time we get to it. Because there's no other way to explain them. They're just sort of cut in half. And for a character like this, I would say that the hair is probably one of the more defining parts of the character. So just going to draw in spike after spike. And since I'm having the wind blowing back this way in the picture, that means her hair is going to have the tendency to go this way. Now moving down from there, we're going to go back to the body. Just sort of going to work on the oversuit a little bit. You want to make sure that you make the edge of the suit stand out a lot. Because they're so much higher than her actual shoulders are. And coming down from there just show where it creases over. Back to the suit. We've got two buttons on it. That's about it. The suit's pretty much just black, some shading in it. The buttons have these X's on it, just as detail. Working on the sleeve of her jacket, got to make sure that we keep these lines pretty tight against her skin, because the jacket is tight on the arms, just like that. Then at the end of her sleeve, it sort of comes off in this collar, which is rather large for the sleeve. And then there's another button on the end of the collar here on this part that sticks out. There we go. 
then from there her hand just comes out right off of that. For this hand, we're going to have it clenched up in a fist. And she's also wearing gloves. So in order to make it appear like gloves, I'm going to add in these three marks here. Then on this other side here, it's pretty much got the same details for the collar. The only difference being that you see a little bit of her skin underneath just because of how she's holding her weapon. Here, since she's holding it backwards like this, we're going to start out with the pinky. Move it backwards. Wait. That doesn't make any sense. And here, since she's holding the sword a little bit differently than a normal person would, I'm going to start out with the first finger, move it on back, and then her thumb comes out right here. For the rest of the body here, we've got the undershirt she wears coming down a bit, and I guess that's just the rest of her school uniform perhaps. That's what it looks like to me. I'm just going to add in a few lines there. And then her dress comes out below that. We got sort of like a plaid pattern going on. So that's going to be fairly easy to mix in. And I just added in this uh, crease line to give it a little bit of interest. Just like that coming straight down out of the dress. Her legs are very, very thin, and as far as I can tell, they don't have hardly any detail on them whatsoever. There's a little bit of shadowing where it comes out of her dress, but other than that, nothing else. And then her shoes, or boots, they more like they seem, are very unique. So they come down around like this, and they're also pretty big. Then going right over top, close to the top of the boots, we've got these white buckles that come around, just like that. Overlap a lot. And then we've got another one right below that. Then we've got the rest of the shoe boot coming around on the edge here. The edge of, or the toe of the boot is very square. It doesn't really have anything going over it. But coming off of that part and over across this is yet again another buckle as it seems. Then just before it gets to the actual toe of the boot, it comes back up again with another white mark. And then at the bottom here, see that has a few black triangles. Then here on the buckles themselves, show that parting off. And where it actually connects. We're going to do that for both of them. Then for the rest of the cloak, coming off of here, it's going to be very wavy. It's going to be nice straight lines coming down across it. Except for the end here where I'm going to have it tattered. 
And then for her weapon here, there's not too much details to it, but it looks pretty cool nonetheless. And if someone would so graciously tell me what this weapon is in the comments, that'd be really nice. This oval coming around, and it almost looks like an eye, with two rectangles sticking out of it. In the center we've got another oval, and inside of that we have yet another oval, and a tiny glare. And it really does look like an eye, which is sort of creepy. And then at the tip of that, just max off. And then in the side part here, we got three holes. We need about, about the same size. And we're going to make sure that our line for the blade is pretty well masked off. Then going all the way along this blade, we've got these triangles, which are to be colored red later. We're going to try and get rid of all the smudges that we possibly can, just around the character. some of these sketch lines inside of the uh, character as well. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to take a fine point sharpie. We're practically going to outline all of the lines on this drawing. It's going to give us a really nice looking drawing. It's going to clean everything up and it just looks awesome. All right, so now we can finish erasing all the underlying pencil. So now I'm going to start coloring uh, Maka, sorry for forgetting that for a second. I'm going to start out with the eyes because they are really, 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 really starting to bother me a lot because I can't tell what they're going to look like. I'm going to start out with the green base coat. And a little bit more grass green to the bottom. Build it down a bit. Then a dark gray towards the top. Sort of blend the dark gray into it. And I still don't understand how that looks right, but I guess it's okay. That's just how they designed the characters. Um, her tie actually matches her eye color. So you can just color that in real quick. And then what we're going to do from there, we're just going to start laying base coat colors for all our colors. So we can get ready for some shading. Alright, now to shade Maka, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a darker color. I'm going to shade to the right of the light. I'm choosing to have the light in front of her. That means all the shadows are going to be to this side. All you have to do is just take a darker color. For whatever color it may be, like for the hair I'm just using like this orange color. Blend a little bit of gray into it. For the black shading for Maka's coat, I'm going to first take it and sort of get an idea of where I want the most harsh shading to be, where I want the lighting to be exactly. Because in manga characters like this and anime characters, the shading is always pretty blunt, especially on objects like clothes. Just need to mask off the shading like such and then fill it in. And then just to finish up the black, I'm going to take the dark gray that I used in the first place and just fill in all these areas just to sort of make it overall darker. On, the, on Maka's weapon, on the blade, we're going to do a little bit more complex shading just by taking the reds and the blacks and just sort of blending them into a lighter portion of it. 
And then from there, going back into the darker portion just like this. Making the color really bright. Very even. That just almost makes it look like her weapon is glistening a little bit. Or shining. Finish up the shading on Maka. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add in a shadow beneath her feet. Just a simple gray. And that's my finished drawing of Maka. This was the first time I've drawn this character, and quite honestly, I think this turned out really well. I like the shading I was able to do on it, and the fact that I actually made the character look like the character. That's sort of a first. So I hope you guys like this drawing just as much as I did. You guys should subscribe if you like the drawing, because I plan on uploading more videos of video game characters to come. And this was also a request. If you want to send me a request, go to my channel, go down to the moderators module, type in your request for your favorite video game character, and it just might show up as a tutorial of its own someday. Thank you guys for watching this video, and until next time, keep on drawing.